Arc overhangs are an impressive way to 3D print huge overhangs into free air. Two months ago they still were just a proof of concept with only some sample prints available. Today you can directly use them in Prusa Slicer, small asterisk here, and you can try them out yourself without the hassle of extracting coordinates, modifying Python scripts and patching together G-code files. Let's find out more. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Easily create the website you've always wanted or replace your old one that you've always hated. Save 10% by visiting squarespace.com slash CNC kitchen. 3D printing is often called a disruptive technology where anything is possible and engineers have total design freedom. Complexity is free. Well, to some degree this is true. Additive manufacturing can produce parts and shapes that would be impossible with conventional manufacturing techniques. But it also has its limitations. One of these limitations is the overhang angle. The steeper overhangs become, the harder they are to print and once we reach completely horizontal surfaces, the extruded material will just droop down. Here is where the idea from Stephen McCulloch comes into play. He extruded individual arcs next to each other that are self-supporting and he can this way print huge overhang surfaces without the need for supports. If you want more details on how this method works, check out my previous video linked here and also linked below. Oh, and since so many asked, this forbidden toothpaste is Prusa Mint Marble PLA. Link in the description and if you order from Prusa, also check out our inserts that they sell. As awesome as the idea is, the hard it was to use because Steven's initial script just generated random shapes for test prints. When I used it for my real test parts, I had to extract coordinates and then manually hack them together in a G-code file. But all of this very quickly changed. The last video got a ton of attention and two separate parties started implementing this new overhang algorithm directly into a slicer. The first implementation was done by RVMN and Superplacker, which is a fork of Super Slicer, especially optimized for multicolor printing. The other implementation came out of nowhere from a German fellow named Nikolai. He made a post-processing script that you can add to any of your existing Prusa Slicer profiles that will automatically detect regular overhangs and replace them with ARC overhangs. It simply blew me away how the community took a concept and used their skill and motivation to make this technology readily available and even improve it. Both early implementations still have their problems, but they also added some remarkable improvements such as fight warping of arc overhangs. There are a ton of other amazing ideas and products that unfortunately never really get traction. Starting a business takes more than just the invention itself, you also need to present it in a professional and easy accessible way, which starts by having a great website. And Squarespace, who sponsored this video, is where you can get one. Squarespace is one of the easiest to use yet beautiful website development tools out there. Some of the world's biggest companies and even I use Squarespace to create a great looking website that is also easy to maintain. Head over to squarespace.com slash CNC kitchen, select one of their beautiful templates suitable for every purpose and find out how easy creating your own website is without having any expert knowledge. Once you're ready to launch, Squarespace offers you 10% off your first website and domain purchase if you use code CNC kitchen at checkout. Squarespace has everything from a simple blog to beautiful portfolios and e-commerce tools to sell your physical products and also digital designs. Squarespace has got you covered and you you can add all of this with just a couple of clicks in their amazing online editor. And if you're still getting stuck, they have 24 seven support and one of the best help centers that I have ever used. So get started and save 10% by visiting squarespace.com slash CNC kitchen and using code CNC kitchen when checking out. Okay, let's take a look at the two arc overhang implementations, how you can use them and how you can help make them even better. The easiest way to start is to use the current pre-release alpha version of Super Plecker, which is a fork of Super Slicer and therefore basically Prusa Slicer on steroids. They already implemented a very rudimentary version of the arc overhangs where you don't have to do anything but slice your part and it will automatically generate arc overhangs on horizontal surfaces, which works quite well. I got the best results when I turned off thick bridges, didn't use any wiping and turned the bridging speed way down to only one to 2 millimeters a second. 
The version I tried didn't have the recursive arcs yet that Steven initially programmed and that looked so mesmerizing during printing because the segments got smaller and smaller and therefore perfectly filled the most complex surfaces. But they're writing on their GitHub page that this will be implemented in the next release. On the other hand, the thing that Superplecker has are automatic corner supports. If you watched my last video, you will know that the arc overhang layers usually print very flat. Yes, as soon as the next layer is printed on top, it severely warps. Many of you suggested adding small support pillars at the edges to avoid that and this is exactly what Superplecker can do automatically. There are special support options that will find overhang corners and automatically place small supports that significantly reduce warping and only cost a little material and additional printing time. Since it's a first preview, many things still don't work perfectly and barely any arc overhang settings are available through the graphical user interface. For example, this version of Superplecka will also use arc overhangs on bridge infill areas, wasting a ton of time. But as I said, this is the first preview to get an idea of what we will see in future releases. And if the release notes are true, there might already be the next, more advanced version released once you see this video. So check out their GitHub page. But if you want to go even deeper in the arc overhang rabbit hole, then you need to try out Nikolai's Prusa Slicer post-processing script that's directly based on the original arc overhang technology. This is a bit more involved because it's still running in Python and needs a Python installation on your machine. Nikolai has a short guide on his GitHub, but this is what you need to get it running. Download Python and during installation activate the path option right here. Once this is done, I created a new temp folder in the root directory of my hard drive to ensure that there are no spaces in the path. Then I downloaded the Python script and the requirements file and put them into this directory. In here, right click while pressing shift on your keyboard and open the command prompt. Install the required libraries with this command and simply add this line right here to the output options of your regular Prusa Slicer profile. This points to the Python exe and the arc overhang script. Now you're good to go. With this method, the arc overhangs won't be generated in Prusa Slicer itself, so you won't see them at first. However, once you export your model, the post processor will kick in and will replace the normal overhangs with arc overhangs. And even though this method is a bit more involved, it's for now a great way to quickly optimize settings and even the algorithms itself, because if you want, you can simply open the Python script and play around in here. Nikolai didn't only make the script ready to be used in Prusa Slicer, yet also improved it in several ways. There aren't only improvements in the way how arc overhangs are generated, but he also came up with a genius way how he tried to tackle the warping that's happening once the next layers are printed on top without using additional support pillars. He stumbled over a paper where different infill patterns and direct metal laser centering were investigated to reduce internal stresses. They compared a conventional checkerboard pattern against fractal infills like Hilbert curves and found out that these special infills cost low residual stresses. But what does this have to do with our arc overhangs? If we print a regular layer on top of the flimsy overhang, the long extrusions will contract and warp the whole layer, similar to how a bimetal bends if one side contracts more than the other. Though a Hilbert curve consists out of many small lines going in different directions that contract less due to their short length. So if you print these on top of arc overhangs, they warp less compared to regular rectilinear infill. Nikolai then also noticed that if he prints the next layers on top of the overhang with significantly less cooling, then it will start bending down again from getting soft and the additional weight. This phenomenon is usually something we don't want, but here we can use it to compensate for the warping. And if you tune it in perfectly, you can get nice straight overhangs without added supports. Isn't that ingenious? And if all of this tuning doesn't help, there's still the support painting tool to quickly add some tiny supports onto the critical corners. Nikolai's implementation is in no way perfect, but he did all the groundwork to make the Python script easily usable in Prusa Slicer. This provides a simple way to use it, and if someone has an idea to improve it, it's far easier to play around with a Python script instead of compiled C++ code. These two ways of easily using arc overhangs a Prusa Slicer finally made the method accessible for many enthusiasts, but will it be the future of overhang handling?
I personally think it won't replace regular supports, but they might be a great way to complement them. Organic supports just recently showed once again how even classic supports can still be vastly improved and now provide a way to support almost any structure with a minimal material effort and are easy to remove. But they still need material, require rework and if you have internal surfaces might even be almost impossible to remove. Arc overhangs are slow and will probably remain slow and need a ton of tuning. But they don't need any additional material or maybe only little and produce parts that are ready to use. So for overnight prints, serial production parts where you can take the time to tune in the process or complex parts that you want to use right away, arc overhangs might be the new way to go if we continue improving it. So if you are excited what Steven, Nikolai and the guys from Super Blacker achieved in such a short amount of time, try it out, give feedback and if you have the skill and motivation, help bring open source 3D printing another step forward. Links to both releases in the description by the way. I hope you found this update on arc overhangs interesting. If you did, leave a like and let me know what you think the future of overhang handling will be. Classic supports or fancy arc overhangs? Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you found this video interesting. If you want to support my work, head over to Patreon or become a YouTube member. Also check out the other videos in my library. I hope to see you in the next one, auf Wiedersehen and goodbye. <coughs>